Hello and welcome to Small Gold Shanghai Gold Exchange Withdrawal Update for the month of November 2017. Shanghai Gold Exchange Withdrawals climbed in November and they now stand through November for the year 2017 at 1,845 tons. Shanghai Gold Exchange Withdrawals rose nearly 25% in November to 189 tons, up from 151 tons in October. Shanghai Gold Exchange November withdrawals, however, were down from last November. They were down about 12% from 214 tons last year. Let's take a look at some of the charts. By the way, here are the Chinese silver pandas. You can buy these and the Chinese gold pandas. They have a different design every year with the cute panda on the front. The back stays the same, similar to the Canadian Maple Leafs and the Australian coins where they always have the back with the queen and the front with a different design. You can do so at the links below. This, um, I can't say VidMe anymore, but BitChute and YouTube. Not investment advice to buy gold or silver, but if you're interested in buying, it is a unique coin. Both uh, the gold and the silver coins, they are now not in ounce size, they are in gram sizes. That's been the case for the past couple of years. Prior to that, they are in ounces. Also, they're limited edition. They generally don't make more than 8 million of the silver and far fewer of the gold. So there is some numismatic premium on But let's take a look at the charts for the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And this is an exchange that really has picked up in volume. You can see since about the middle of 2013 and many months since then, they've had withdrawals over 200 tons. This month was a little lower, but still 181 tons is a respectable six, six plus million ounces. Uh, and that's just in one given month. And as we mentioned already, that is actually 189. I could see it peeking up at me here, not 181 tons, 189 tons um, a month. And here's how you can see how this November compares to prior Novembers. Again, since 2013, elevated withdrawals. You're in this close to 200 range or 200 the last three years and just below 200 uh, 200 tons of withdrawals in 2017 in November. Now, the other thing I always like to mention when we do the Shanghai Gold Exchange update is to compare it to the COMEX deliveries. COMEX futures are 90 some odd percent purely cash settled. It's not a place to go and pick up yourself some tonnage. There is a delivery option, but it's not it's not why they're there. If you think about the futures for Bitcoin, there's no physical delivery. So basically, these futures are meant to be hedging. The U.S. COMEX futures are meant to be hedging. They're meant to be a way of hedging inventory. If you're a bullion dealer, you sell short the inventory that you buy, or just a way of being a speculator. Shanghai Gold Exchange, on the other hand, it is much more of a place where you can actually take uh, the, the gold off the exchange. And you can see here by this chart, this was just a couple of weeks in 2014 in Shanghai. They had 137 tons withdrawn versus 85 tons the entire year of 2014. And we just saw 189 tons in um, a month. So, you know, this year, if you divide that by four, it's about 75 tons in two weeks, almost as much as the entire 2014 COMEX deliveries. Here's another chart I made that just shows the difference between COMEX and withdrawals on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And you can see here, this year is 2017. We're already at 1845. We're probably past last year's withdrawals. And you can see the 2014, 15, and 16 numbers, 222, 46, and 85 tons delivered. Clearly not a place to go and buy and have delivered physical gold. Now, here's where we are um, through November, uh, this year and all prior years. And you can see we're just about in third place, tied with uh, 2014. Best year was 2015 through November, and actually was the best year overall for gold withdrawals in the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Looks like 2013 was the second best. Let's take a look at the final numbers for the years. This is not yet a final number for 2017 it looks like uh, we should manage to beat last year 
might be a stretch. Well, might not be. Might be able to catch 2014, but it looks like this might be out of reach. So this will either be the third or the fourth largest year as long as December comes in in the 150, 200 range. We should be around the 200, 2014 levels. Since 2008, Shanghai Gold Exchange has had 14,000 plus tons withdrawn. That about does it, but this just want to highlight before we close. Gold demand around the world is fine. It's just the U.S. Mint that is really, really off this year. Perth Mint demand we've seen is a bit off. It's off, but it's not off that by much. The Indian gold demand imports are higher this year than they were last year. The uh, Shanghai Gold Exchange, as you can see, already passed last year's number uh, year over year. And then it's only going to take uh, not much to pass last year. Uh, numbers. So I think if you're at 1970 at the moment and we're already at 1845, it'll just take another buck and a quarter, 125 tons. And this year will be bigger than last year. Last year was a very respectable, very big month. Uh, later this week, we're going to do the uh, People's Bank of China gold editions. Now, they haven't reported any editions since October of 2016. That was ironically the well, not ironically or perfectly timed, the months that they were admitted to the SDR. But we also see, while the Shanghai, while the People's Bank of China is not adding gold to the reserves, we are still seeing strong gold imports into Hong Kong. So gold demand in China, in India, and as we'll see, oh, probably Wednesday or Thursday, Russian gold reserves are also on the climb. Now, Russia may not add gold well, they might in November, but they've already added close to their 200 tons, which they've added in 2015 and 2016. So they may top off, at, they may just cap it at 200 tons this year. I don't know. But the point being is that 2017 has been no discernible fall off in gold demand, actually up a bit in India, up a bit in China, and probably going to be up a bit in in Russia and those are and that's up against last year which was a decent year in 2015 which was a good year so the gold demand the gold story is still intact except that there are as we've seen stories a lot of hedge funds chasing a Bitcoin now remember hedge funds don't chase physical gold in the first place they buy ETFs they buy contract so the physical gold demand is still relative you know it's still strong um, the mining is not really increasing, so the supply demand, demand day, supply demand dynamic is still it's favorable, but it's with helping out the uh, the price situation for gold, and the same is happening with silver. Although silver demand is down, it seems in the um, coin and jewelry market, but Indian silver. Imports are fairly strong, and I've got to do a report on the Chinese silver imports. I think they're up as well. So, again, physical demand for metals is high. Um, it's the paper demand that is low, but paper drives the price. Thanks very much for listening.